you know, it, it's a shame when um, people try to do the right thing, give an overall example uh, in the classroom, and they happen to be a black male, which you're not going to find a whole lot of black males in the classroom. Lee Francis is a black man with various advanced degrees that was teaching in a high school in, I believe it was North Carolina. He was teaching a class regarding the First Amendment. And he was demonstrating why the First Amendment is what it is. The American flag basically is just a piece of cloth, but it's also a symbol to a lot of people of different things, okay? Anyway, two of his students, um, when he put the flag down on the ground and stepped on it, got pissed off. One of them took a video, which, by the way, is illegal. It was illegal for the student to take a picture or a video in the classroom, just like it would have been illegal for him to take pictures or videos of his students in that same classroom. But, you know, that, that's an aside. Uh, the majority, or the rest of the students, because two of the students got up and walked out, the rest of the students stayed, got the lesson, and understood exactly what was going on. Now, this brother is being quote unquote blackballed by a white superintendent who has a dubious history of his own. He was fired from his previous position uh, in Florida. I believe it was a boys and girls club uh, organization down there. And it took him three years to get another job. Now, Preceding his uh, history in Florida, he was in San Diego, California, and uh, he left uh, that position under cloudy circumstances. So this guy's got a history. But anyway, let me play this clip for you, and then I'll make uh, some closing comments. What happens when a school teacher tries to make a lesson real, then all of a sudden gets targeted as a result, my next guess is actually what took place for him. He was trying to give his students a lesson on the First Amendment, on the Constitution. Well, Lee Francis was teaching history at Massey Hill Classical High School in Fayetteville, North Carolina, trying to teach the students about the Supreme Court and about the decision when it came to the U.S. flag. Well, he steps on the U.S. flag to illustrate this. The two students walked out mid-lesson and later, an upset parent wrote a post on Facebook urging the school to take action. Her post read in part, quote, that flag might not mean anything to the teacher, but it means a lot to us and it means a lot to the families that had their service member come home to them in a casket with that flag draped over it. I asked the principal if she would be letting the superintendent in on this, and she stated, no, this is an in-house matter. Now, Francis was initially suspended from teaching at the school. But in a recent meeting with the Cumberland County Superintendent, he learned his contract won't be renewed. Well, he joins me right now in studio. Lee Francis, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, sir? So here you are trying to illustrate actual history, a Supreme Court decision that says what you did is constitutional. Right. That's great. And you were teaching. So they're mad because you were teaching? It was a demonstration. It was a lesson to to make history come alive, to, to get kids to think critically about what's going on, not only in our communities, but what's going on in our text. Uh, and there has been a vitriolic uh, backlash because of it. So, was well, well, this the first time you had done that? Yes. And why did, you, why, why did you want to do this? And did you think that if I do this, there could be a reaction? It was really a spur of the moment uh, kind of demonstration. It was, we were talking about freedom of, free, uh, freedom of speech, rather, or freedom of expression. And 
we got into symbolic speech and we wanted to, I wanted to get the kids to make sure they understood it. We can talk about the speech is written and you could you could you know, it, it's written down, it's verbalized, but I wanted to show them what symbolic speech was. So in the classroom that was this back and forth between you and the student. Absolutely. Where you and I, I take the discussion wasn't heated, but it was a discussion about the issues. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Uh, and you know, outside of the two students that uh, left the room, the majority of the class understood exactly what the lesson was. Uh, I had kids from other classes coming in saying, I even understood and I wasn't even in your class. Uh, and so it's, just, it's unfortunate that uh, the community has been uh, asinine in its response um, and uh, their refusal to, to learn the facts. And so what now for you? I mean, first of all, uh, you're, you're one of the few African-American men uh, who's teaching uh, in a classroom. Um, that's an issue. Um, what, what's next for you? The superintendent told me bluntly that I would not be put back in the classroom. Uh, I have been relocated uh, as of September 27th to work in a warehouse where I move pallets and electronic equipment. So what about See, now what kind of bullshit is that, okay? He, I mean, he's a teacher. He has a contract to teach, not to move pallets. Now, if they uh, don't want him back there, that's a simple matter. All they need to do is just pay out his contract and call it a day. When his contract is up uh, for renewal, uh, it's absolutely their right not to renew his contract. But what they're doing thus far, making him work in a warehouse, that's, you know, and I know he's got a lawyer, you know, he's indicated he's got a lawyer because that would be bullshit as far as uh, me, uh, this guy was not hired to do manual labor, and that's what they have him doing. And he pulls out his contract, uh, and his lawyers review his contract. I'm almost positive it says nothing about manual labor. Anyway, let's continue. Oh, you're a teacher. That's correct. And you're doing a laborer's job. That's correct. Up until this point, had you had any issues in the classroom? No, sir. My evaluations from my principal were stellar. And so it begs the question, what prompted the response? The superintendent himself said, quote, that my acts were not an act of civil disobedience towards the county or the school. And so it begs the question, what exactly did I do wrong? So superintendent said you weren't being disobedient. Absolutely. They acknowledged that you were teaching. That's exactly right. So what they're really doing is they are um, basically falling prey to community protest. It seems that way. The superintendent said that uh, while my actions were not an act of civil disobedience, it was, quote, inappropriate. And that was the basis for discipline. What's, um, what's next for you? Well, this is something that, that has not been released to the press, but we have my hearing set for November 30th, where the school board will decide whether or not I'm terminated or whether or not I keep my job. The school board does not decide, however, whether or not I go back into a classroom. The superintendent made that clear, and that is not an option. So if the school board says you keep your job, you're still working as a laborer? That's correct. Let's say the school board makes that decision. Are you going to keep doing that, or are you going to seek a teaching job elsewhere? The... One of the issues is I, I'm an educator. I've got a master's degree. I've got advanced training in education in this field. Um, that's what I signed up to do. I didn't sign up to be a laborer, and that, not that there's anything wrong with that. But my education is to to be sharing ideas in a classroom, engaging students, and and getting them to be inspired. Um, that's what I want to do. Have you heard from other school districts? I have not. Um, one of the issues that, that I've run into is that I need a recommendation from the superintendent. To teach again? Yes. One of the things that even if the board decides not to terminate me, one of the things the superintendent is well within his rights to do is to take my teaching license. If I am terminated, not only do I not teach in the county, I don't teach in the state, which by and large I don't get reciprocity in other states to teach. See, now that's bullshit, okay, because I'm, it, if the guy gets fired, I probably would sue anyway, but if he doesn't get fired and the superintendent arbitrarily decides to uh, revoke his license, 
No, no, this guy's got, he's got too many, uh, he's got too many issues here uh, that uh, need to be litigated. And again, um, that superintendent, he's got a shady past. So um, there needs to be a lawsuit filed here. Okay, so wait a minute. So they could, so who, who could take your license? The superintendent. So the school board, would, so the school board would decide whether you keep your job. Correct. Okay. So if the school board decides that you keep your job, um, can a superintendent still take your license? That's the question my attorneys are working to figure out now. And so, you see, I'm missing something here because I thought the license was issued by the state. So how the hell can the superintendent snatch his license? If his license is issued by the state, he would should have to go before some type of a state education board. But the sup superintendent should not uh, have the ability to pull his license. He might be able to uh, try to have a hearing to have his license pulled, but the superintendent shouldn't be able to do that. Something something's not quite uh, right here. Oh, so let's say a charter school mm -hmm. in another city. Sure decides that, hey, we want to offer you a job. Um, can they do so? Yes, the charter schools are outside of certain regulations that we require, for example, a public school, uh, a state mandated school. And so they have different uh, regulations that they're able to, to work with. And for example, if I were to go to the university level, the same thing is true there. Uh, teacher license doesn't particularly uh, matter in those kinds of spheres. Um, but if I'm terminated, that changes the ball game. Let's say you get hired by a charter school. Let's say you teach there three, five years. Sure. Would you still be bound by that superintendent's decision in North Carolina? The license they're able to take that, I believe, for up to two years. And then I'd have to apply and do the whole process over again. Okay, so let's, so, so let, let's just, so again, so if, if, the, school, if, the, if the school chooses, to, if the school board chooses to either fire you or to keep, or to keep you. It doesn't matter what their decision is. Mm -hmm. Even if they fire you, the superintendent could still allow you to keep your license. Yes. So your future livelihood is all in the hands of this one superintendent. Who, and who's the superintendent? Uh, Dr. Frank Till Jr. Uh, he came from Florida. Uh, he was actually terminated from that position uh, from Florida uh, before coming to us. And so I find the whole thing a bit ironic that I was teaching a lesson on freedom of speech, uh, showing students what their rights are. And the irony is I was being called unpatriotic. Um, and here I'm being, a, I'm facing termination from someone that uh, faced it himself. Well, who have you gotten um, support from? Uh, we, we've, the ACLU has uh, come out in support of us. They came out immediately uh, in support of us. Uh, former teachers uh, from that school, Massey Hill Classical High School, have come out, uh, send me emails, students, uh, parents, uh, military officials, uh, a lot of the religious organizations, a lot of folks have come out in support. Uh, are they going to rally and be there for you on November 30th for your hearing? Absolutely. Uh, I'm actually teaching a lesson uh, Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday the 16th, in, in Fayetteville. Um, and uh, it is at a, the office of a, a church organization there, um, and uh, we've got a great response for, for those that support what I did and those that did not. Uh, and being a military town, it's a lot of military folks that do not support what I did. Mm -hmm. Well, man, I mean, that is certainly um, amazing that you're trying, you're trying to actually teach history, trying to teach a Supreme Court decision, and then people are angry that you actually chose to do so. Absolutely. All right, well, Lee, try to keep us abreast of what happens. I will do. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right, so anyway, um, this guy, in my opinion, and again, I'm not an attorney, but it appears that uh, he's got uh, several uh causes of action against uh, the superintendent, obviously, and if they terminate him, uh, potentially against the school board itself. You got to keep up on this story, you know, to see what happens.